Hey babe, so this is a fun one. This was by request and I did a couple different variations of it. I didn't do the middle one because it looked horrible, but I did do the other ones. So let's go ahead and jump on in. I am using Rebalance. It's from my friend Felicia Dermafay. Check her out. She's fantastic. She's awesome. She's as OCD on cuticles as I am. So I actually removed the sticky layer from the uh, after it cured. And now I'm going in with just some regular uh, no wipe shiny top coat. Gonna go ahead and add my chrome. This is a cheapo one. I don't remember where it came from. I want to say eBay like three, four years ago. I don't remember to be honest with you guys. There are some really, really good new ones out that are a thousand times better than this one. And I actually have some arriving soon. But check out how thin my application is, you guys. I always want to keep everything as thin as humanly possible. So now I'm going to cut my foil. I'm going to use these two right here. One is just solid smooth. The other one has that prismatic. These ones are kind of watercolory and oil slick. We don't want those. I'm going to go ahead and when I cut them, I put them face down. Just go ahead and instinctively just do it. Just put the side with the design down. Same thing with this guy. I'm going to take it and put it down. Then I'm going to use a Sharpie and write on the back of it. The reason why I'm doing this is because when you go to cut them, sometimes it's hard to tell what side they're on. So I just do this on the back, get that done out of the way. It'll make your life a lot easier, you guys. Please trust me on this, especially when you go to remove it. And if you don't have it, it's just going to be a smooth spot and not have any of the iridescent. It's a humble moment. It just kind of makes you feel like a turd, but you know, it does happen. So this is a way of preventing those turd moments from happening. Prevent, don't cure, because you don't want to do a repair on that. I'm not even going to show you how to do a repair on that because it, it's a pain in the butt. So please heed my warning and put that little design on the back of it. Go ahead. Now I do have some thicker ones. Thicker ones generally should be going down the middle and then thinner on the sides. But if you do too thick of a big piece in the middle, then it could cause a seamage and you'll see on my thumb in a minute. So now that I'm about to move on to the next part, the top coat and the chrome can sometimes act as a barrier for the next top coat layer to adhere. So I very, very lightly this is a used buffer, don't judge me. I, it is what it is, it's for tips and fake fingers. It's not like it was on a human. Get all the dust out of it. And then I'm going through with acid-free primer. This is gonna act as my double sticky tape. And let me tell you, your chrome will last forever if you do that. It's one of my big tips and tricks. I don't know if I'm gonna keep this video up very long. I'll be very realistic with you guys. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here that I teach in my private classes, so this may just be up for a couple people, TBD. But now I'm going to put the strips. Notice that the marked side is up, which means the pattern is laying down. Lay that first strip right along. I do end up moving them over, and I give myself almost a line going down the middle of the nail, but you can't really see it. Like you're not gonna see it when the top coat's on, but see how it like goes really, really close and it looks like a line is there? You're not gonna see that once it's all said and done, you guys. So I'm just gonna press this in to my top coat. There are multiple different ways that we're gonna be doing this today, but this is the first way. Probably should have mentioned that in my introduction. Dang, missed opportunity. But it is what it is. Press it all into space. If you want to cut a corner piece, go ahead. That is so nitpicky. I personally would not do that. So this is the first way that I figured out playing it with it. I'm OCD on my shape, you guys. I really don't want to deter from shapes, no matter what the nail art is. If it's a 3D nail art, that's different. But what's nice about this is it still keeps its shape happy and good to go. And I mean, look at that. Look at that reflection. That is magical. I'm going to go ahead with some top coat and seal it all up, seal the deal. Make sure it's all happy-go-lucky. Make sure it's smooth. But notice how that line really isn't there. It's just more of a facet instead of a, just a line. Cap free edge. Make sure it's tight, y'all. Keep it clean. 
put that into the Easy Bake Oven. I'm actually gonna turn off my overhead so you can see the prismatic awesomeness and how smooth it actually is. Like it's really, really, really smooth. There we go. So there's the glare line, the line of light. It's still happy. We'll wait and wipe off the extra chrome with the cuticle oil or a wipe, whatever. So this is up to the fresh chrome application point and I'm using my acid-free primer. For this cutting style, this is my personal favorite. I think it looks better. It really kind of custom tailors to the nail. It takes a bit more time to cut, but charge accordingly. I, I charge by the hour, so that's how all of that goes. Matching it, you wanna leave it a little naked on the, X, on the sides, um, but go ahead and use some curve scissors and create the cuticle area or, you know, similar to the cuticle area as much as possible. Just kind of trim that up. But see how it goes nice and it just matches the cuticle area. Flip it around and using straight scissors, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep the middle portion one nice piece, one right there. So whereas last time I had two pieces in the middle, this one is just one piece in the middle and then I'm doing two pieces on the side. So this technique I really, really like because I think it lasts longer and I just think it looks overall better. Look at that. So now it's going to match the cuticle. Watch this magic, you guys. Look at this. Look at that. So I am using a clear gel. You may use a rubber base gel. You can use a builder gel. I'm just using a thick clear gel, but it's not thick though. So, okay. It looks thick because of the reflection in the camera of the chrome, but it's not thick, you guys. It really, it's just a very, very thin amount. Everything I do in nails is ungodly thin, so I apologize to all my students in advance. Now, slide it from the cuticle, go down, and it will just line up, look at that, like butter. It'll just fit perfectly. If you try to do it a different way, you're gonna have a big old sticky mess. That's how I did this. That, oh, I'm just telling you guys, like this was my favorite. I'm trying to censor my words because I don't want to swear all the time when I do videos. You know, in case, you know, I just don't want to swear all the time. Just trying to set a better standard for myself and for others. So cure that, pull it off. Ah, that was my heavenly angel sound. I mean, the application's awesome. It was a sticky, uh, thin viscosity, thin see thin thin viscosity gel that I just stuck it all in this is the same thin viscosity gel and I'm basically doing an overlay or encapsulating the ridges that we created they're not really ridges but they are ridges now if you wanted to do something similar to this on a top coat do it I don't know if the foil design itself will stay because you know oil, cooking, washing your hands, using the restroom, shower, you know, all that stuff might rub it off, but you'll still have the facets. So that was a big trend back when, and I really love the way this looked. I'm going to give it a quick little buff and dust, a little buff and dust. Take that top coat, seal the free edge, make sure everything's locked, cocked, and ready to rock, and then apply as normal. Make sure you don't get it onto the skin. Make sure it's all nice and smooth, flatten the brush, get full exposure so that way it is nice and clean glare line is flawless and there it is this is my personal favorite the next one is the uh marvelous one but this one i really loved and i actually have it on my middle finger now so the marvelous one kind of like the abalone shell super secret ingredient jewelry gel no cleanse jewelry gel we're talking thick sticky icky like gooey galore it is intense and that's a-okay because it's gonna save the shape or hold on to the shape so first gotta do a full coat coverage make sure you know you get as close to the cuticle as possible and just make sure you have a, a good coat on top this nail you can smooth it out i'll show you on my own finger uh but this one that I'm doing at this moment, I did not smooth out. Just give it some dents, smoosh it around, and it's going to cure with all these bumpies. I'm going to go ahead and chrome the bumpies. 
because it's a no cleanse jewelry gel, it really did a wonderful job with this technique, this style. I really, really like it. So if you don't mind the bumpy feelies, which to be honest with you, all the videos I saw overseas, it's bumpy. I'm extraordinarily OCD and I think the bumps would drive me absolutely insane. So I definitely on my own finger had to do a buff. So here is the first version. The second version you can't even see because I ended up doing another chrome on top of it. But it's super, super smooth. No bumps, no dips. Just super smooth and uh, looks like it's bumpy. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please give it a like and follow for more. I'm doing some big changes to my channel. Here's all of my info in case you want to look me up. Thank you guys again and have an amazing day. Bye!